Former Chargers and current Colts quarterback Philip Rivers, of course, retiring his from football yesterday, ending a fabulous 17-year career as one of the most prolific signal callers in league history. Rivers made the announcement yesterday. The 39-year-old ranks fifth in uh, NFL history. Throw that uh, there you see him. Okay, over 6,300 yards passing. You know, we'll talk more about the numbers coming up. Uh, you know, a lot of people. Uh, th- uh, we were alluding to that game that he played with the torn ACL and the Chargers playoff loss to the Patriots. Well, we're going to have all that coming up in a bit. Of course, this was the statement yesterday that read, in part, I am grateful to the Chargers for 16 seasons, the Colts for that 17th season. Thank you to all my coaches and helped me grow as a player and person. Thanks to the fans. And as special thanks to teammates, without a doubt, his favorite part of the game, being a teammate. Thank you for being mine, he ends his uh, statement with. All right, and... Uh, who knows him better? Well, let's just look at those numbers. 252 consecutive starts, including playing on a leg that needed surgical repair. He, he did make it to the seven playoff appearances. And uh, he's fifth all time uh, in like three different major categories. So it, it's a pretty significant career, to say the least. Joining us now to def- further discuss Rivers' career and legacy is current VP of sports programs with the San Diego Padres and former Chargers PR director who who spent a lot of his time shepherding big name players like Philip Rivers, Mr. Bill Johnston. Oh, Bill, how are you doing? Ollie, I'm good, buddy. How are you guys? Uh, I'm better now that we're uh, talking to you. You've seen a lot of big name players come and go. Where does this rank on the oh on the fan meter as far as popularity? Oh. Um... Probably, I would say he's in he's in the top five easily. Yeah. Uh, I would say just uh, because of his duration in San Diego, he'd spent his what was uh, you know a very very strong career here in San Diego. To say the least, uh, Bill, I to me the day he was became a Hall of Famer was the day in New England when I, I'm sure you recall it was bitterly cold. I mean, it was freezing in the press box, but to be on the field was just brutal. He was playing on one leg, and he delivered that gutty performance. To me, that epitomizes Philip Rivers. Could you expand on that? Well, it, it was. It, it was a game that I think people will always remember, and it kind of changed a, a lot of his image around the country because I think Philip was a very misunderstood player, um, particularly for – you know, uh, opponents fans. Uh, they didn't really know Philip, and uh, obviously we did here in San Diego. We didn't know him as well as we really wanted to. We got to know him over the years because we didn't know him as well because we what we saw from Philip, we weren't able to really be there with him on the field. And he played the game with such enthusiasm, and and he was a he was really a little kid playing this men's game, and he never stopped enjoying it like a kid and um and that enthusiasm was something that um i think everyone around the country really got a chance to to see over the years and really appreciate uh from philip we call it enthusiasm opposing teammates or opposing players and fans might call it trash talking that's the interesting thing about philip rivers because he was such a gentleman and yet on the field he could sling it as good as anybody, could he not, as far as verbal uh, harassment? Oh, yeah, he, he, but he never cursed. You know, he would never curse. And he, he, the, some of the words that he could make up, um, <laughs> I don't know if, they, if they're not. They're definitely not in any dictionary I've ever seen. But the dadgummits of, uh, that he would throw out there, um, Philip was just one of a kind. Um, he's... He played the game, and then one of the things that I'll always remember most about him was kind of his mantra of uh, of life, really, which is faith, family, and football. And he was the first guy that really, in my mind, made it sink into me, and he really lived it out uh, through, as you know, and still living it out today, I imagine. You, perhaps better than most, know exactly what it's like to be an NFL quarterback the pressure you're under, the demands on your time. Can you talk about his dedication to, you know, we see him on the field on Sundays, but getting ready for Sunday requires so much work and preparation. What's that like behind the curtain? Um, well, Philip was always the first or one of the first into the office during the season every day, um, his office being the locker room and the weight room. And he would be there every day, and then he would go to – 
the quarterback room and watch film. I mean, he and and I don't know how much different he is than most quarterbacks, but because that's what quarterbacks do. They have to study and study and study and to be the best that they can be. And, and obviously, Philip was one of the best that have ever played the game. Um, and he was just and he led by example. Um, he was there every morning early, one of the last to leave at night. And the players appreciated that just from watching his work ethic. But he also talked it. He was a very authentic person. He just loved the game. And that's why he's, in my opinion, why he's walking away. Because, again, like I said, his mantra, faith, family, and football, in that order, he always said, now it's time for him to enjoy his family and to spend time with his family. Like, as you remember, his dad coached him in high school on the football field. And now he has always looked forward to coaching his sons on the football field. And I, I, I'm really happy for him getting that opportunity. Or we'll wrap it up with this question, sir. He is Hall of Fame. Is he, is he a Hall of Famer? Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? I couldn't tell you how first ballot, cause sometimes those, those you know, balloting processes, I, I just shake my head. But yes, in my opinion, he's a Hall of Famer. He deserves to be there. Uh, he not just statistically, but from uh, just from the image of the game and the image he projected and the way he played the game. Yeah, he's a Hall of Fame player, and we were blessed to be able to watch him for nearly his entire career here in San Diego. Bill, thank you for uh, joining us. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I just hope it's a first ballot because I think how we played the game is as, almost as important as the numbers he put up. Cause he's, I'm with you. He epitomizes what the NFL used to be and hopefully will be continue to be in the future. Bill Johnson. Oh, hey, Bill, I hear the baseball team's going to be pretty good. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of like that. I kind of, uh, I think I jumped into baseball at the right time. <laughs> yes, timing is everything in life, Bill. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emma. I'll see you when I see you.